house only cost me about a hundred thousand dollars and then some the races are as different as their cars ken walkie from california created the rides in disneyland his personal aim today is to join the 200 mile an hour club with the new front wheel drive car he designed and built himself it performs better than he dared hope miles an hour it's like a, it's like an e-ticket at Disneyland it's a good e-ticket ride it's comfortable it's fast it's thrilling it gets your adrenaline up and, uh, it's good I love it we're in the two club we've got ourselves a record and uh, now we're going to try and push it over three. So if we can make it over 300, we're really going to be happy. In the 400 mile an hour class, one man is setting his sights even higher. After, uh, say, 15 some years of working on this car and doing it on my own, basically, in my backyard, if I could even approach that record or get close to it and, and have the luck of, of getting it, uh, it would really put a highlight on my li life, and I've always tried, and that's been one of my basic dreams uh, to get this record. And uh, it would just mean everything to me. Exit speed was very near 400 miles an hour, 399 for Al Teague out the back door. But he popped a 390, 798, he'll go in the impound, and somewhere in about an hour and 10 minutes from now, we'll make an attempt at a return run. It started quite a few years ago when Campbell first came up here in 1935, and then was followed by Ilston, and then Cobbs, and then the uh, Summer Brothers, and then Donald Campbell, more or less. Uh, not exactly in that order, but uh, I uh, rank very... Uh, privilege to have my name with those names if I do set the world land speed record and so far we're about 10 miles an hour off of it so we're going to keep trying and keep in there and maybe one of these days we can do it. In August 1991 Al Teague's dream came true, almost. His speedomotive streamliner reached 432 miles an hour making him the fastest man ever in a wheel driven vehicle and luckily his average speed wasn't enough to gain the official record. Cobb's 394 mile an hour record turned out to be a tough target to beat. It stood for 13 years before a new contender came forward, Sir Malcolm Campbell's son, Donald, in a newly built Bluebird. Unlike most American attempts, no expense was spared. The bill for the project would end up costing a million pounds, and Campbell himself nearly paid for it with his life. Of course, the first, the first record attempt he did on land was a complete fiasco. We, we went to Bonneville in 1960 and the wheels hit the side soft salt which was lying on the side and spun and of course when you're doing 300 miles per hour and over it is no way I mean you have no hope and of course the car turned over and fell seven times and we got by the car when he was being lifted out of the cockpit and he looked absolutely like a piece of rag, you know, had broken ribs, a broken skull. And he looked at me and he winked and he whispered something to the highway patrolman, which was actually later, I was told, don't let her come in the car with me, let her be in the front, because he was frightened that he'd die. I'd be there and he didn't want to see him like that so i was pushed into the front of the ambulance he was in the back and the hospital was in tuella which is a two-hour drive and suddenly there was a knock on that little window that's behind you know where he was and i opened it up and the highway patrolman and the nurse who were with him said your husband is sending you a message the family tours are all right <laughs> Even then, you know, it's unbelievable. I have survived 
the fastest crash that uh, mankind has ever survived. It took four more frustrating years before Donald Campbell beat Cobb's record. He did it in Australia on Lake Eyre in 1964 with a speed of 403 miles an hour, the first man officially to pass the 400 mark. But by now, the mighty wheel-driven bluebird was a dinosaur. Back on the salt flats, Craig Breedlove, with his unofficial jet engine car, had already reached 407 miles an hour. The transformation of the land speed record had begun. Jet power did away with the troublesome business of driving a car through its wheels. The thrust of its engine literally propelled it across the salt. Soon Breedlove and his art tribal Art Arfons were shattering the old records. The self-taught Arfons built the Green Monster in his backyard in Ohio. Breedlove, in a new version of the Spirit of America, Sonic One, was the first man to pass 500, then 600 miles an hour. As the two battled it out, another American, Bob Summers, drove his elegant goldenrod to a new wheel-driven record of 409 miles an hour. Enter Blue Flame, Gary Gabalich's rocket car, specially built to take the record. With an engine fueled by an explosive mixture of hydrogen peroxide and natural gas, he blasted his pencil-like car to 622 miles an hour. For nearly 10 years, the world of land speed records lay quiet. Much of the astonishing Budweiser rocket. It came with a Sidewinder missile attached to propel it through the sound barrier. Its driver was Stan Barrett. Sidewinder was something that I really didn't want to use. Uh, I really didn't even want to test it because it was, uh, I mean, you've got a Sidewinder missile sitting an inch from the back of your head and it's bolted in there. And I said, has anybody ever fired one of these before on a car? He said, no. I said, well, <laughs> I kept having visions of me firing the button and that Sidewinder comes shooting through and taking my head off. But uh, I mean, I, I didn't know what was going to keep uh, keep this thing from um, coming on through, how they secured it. The car feels like it's going to explode any second. It's screaming and it, the vibrations and so on. You, the noise is incredible in the car. And you think it's going to blow up any minute. You think it's just going to go in a million pieces. Then when I hit the sidewinder, you pull another G of acceleration. And uh, at that speed, it's just an incredible feeling. I mean, I don't really like to even think about that feeling because you want to have it again. Stan reached 739 miles an hour, but he was timed only over 62 feet by unauthorized radar and in one direction. It was never officially recognized, and no one heard the sonic boom. So what's it like driving cars at these phenomenal speeds? I can remember, you know, looking up at the welds that I put into the roll bar system, all of the screws that I put in the windshield, and when you build these cars, I mean, you know, nobody does it to you. You did it to yourself, and, I, you know, you're sitting in this, this machine, and you're, you're wondering if you've constructed a coffin for yourself at that point. It's a bit like driving on ice, and the reason for that is that, that the tires become less and less in contact with the ground. They literally hit the high places, and they're airborne over the low ones. And uh, about 375, you begin to experience the phenomenon, and then by the time you hit 600, the tires have literally no control over the car whatsoever. It's basically um, a ground-borne aircraft. The Americans, with their rockets and jets, had monopolized the land speed record since the mid-60s. Then in 1977, an English businessman, Richard Noble, set out to win it back. It took him and his team six years. Then, one October day in 1983, not on the Salt Flats, but at the Black Rock Desert in Nevada, he officially became the fastest man on Earth in his car, Thrust II. 